Tiny Beautiful Things is a new Hulu series starring Katherine Hahn as a writer who reluctantly becomes a popular advice columnist during a period of turmoil in her life. On this podcast, we like to review a new installment of a different series every show. As such, we'll be discussing the pilot, the backstory, the best and worst parts, as well as playing through a trivia game or two. It's Monday, April 10th, and you are listening to today's episode. You know there's like an annual memory competition every single year. A memory competition? Yeah, and people like use mnemonics to be able to remember a ton of cards or stories or, or something. So like, it's like tactics basically that you use to remember it. Yeah, those are what mnemonics are. And I did mnemonics for this show because I just found it funny how you could connect everything back into it of itself. Let me just explain. So you have Tiny Beautiful Things, this new 2023 Hulu series, right? Not to be confused with tiny pretty things which came out in 2020 it was also a series but it was on netflix guys. yeah i thought that there was a show that was like really closely titled to this sure but so also pretty little liars is pretty closely titled to it as well and that can't be confused with because that came in 2010 on freeform right yeah but then you have big little lies which is also pretty similar to that came pretty out little like liars. 2018 2017 I think. or 2016 yeah. yeah and it was an hbo drama starring reese witherspoon now i, know, what do I we saw know? the first season yeah what do we know about reese with reese witherspoon she executively produces this show right oh yeah well that's where i was going with it you kind of got there a little ahead of i was going to say that she's been in legally blonde election cruel intentions but more recently her production company hello sunshine which notably kicked off in 2014 um with two films right or one was gone gone girl and the other one was one starring her wild yeah right both of those i think were nominated for academy awards exactly but what you might not know is wild is based off a story a 2012 memoir by writer author podcaster cheryl Strayed. It came out a few months before another book that she published, a collection of essays compiled from her Dear Sugar advice column on an online magazine called The Rumpus, and that was called Tiny Beautiful Things. So Dear Sugar was like an actual thing. Dear Sugar is an actual advice column, and then she turned it into sort of a podcast later on. But it was a collection of essays that were grouped together and created to make this book. And so now we have the series that came out, but before it was a series, a few years ago, it was made into a play, actually. A play? Yeah, a play. And they've been trying to get this made for a while. Obviously, Cheryl Strait has been, like, even when Wild was being made, they were in talks to get it made into either a movie or a TV show. But it's come along, and now Hello Sunshine, obviously, uh, is the one doing the production, as well as a few other companies. And it's on Hulu, and tell me what you thought of it. Uh, I mean, so I think that Catherine Hahn kind of carries this whole entire television You're show. Not alone. Yeah, I thought that. Yeah, I thought she was the best part of it by far. Um, yeah, she starts off. She's drunk. She has an alcoholic problem. That's probably where some of that stems from. The reason mm-hmm. why she had to leave her house. And she's coming back from a retirement party. I think it was for her. Um, and she is, yeah, she's just hammered. And then she, when she comes to her house, instead of like being able to uh, go in through the door, she comes in through the window. Oh, wow. <laughs> and, uh, and then, uh, yeah, I've had some friends do that on like late occasions really? back in college. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. They break into the wrong house. <laughs> break into the wrong house. Well, the houses would be so like, they would look similar and then they would go to the wrong that one. That reminds me of Robert Downey Jr. back in the nineties. Yeah. I had a friend who actually worked for the person who lived next door to them and after the second time they got fired <laughs> well i can yeah. imagine so yeah no she passes out on the floor and then that's when we meet danny danny again is her husband uh he comes in with like a baseball bat thinking it was a robber and says it's just her mm-hmm. ray who i think is like they may say her age in this episode it's like 16 or 17 year i think old she's daughter. like 20 uh, something in real life 22 oh, okay. <laughs> yeah well here i think she's still playing a high schooler mm-hmm. um they kind of both confront her and they're like look are you it's like a little intervention. Yeah. Spontaneous intervention. Yeah. And then, like, dude, that's when kind of Claire realizes, again, that's Catherine Hahn, that she has to leave. She's like, oh, I'm not welcome here. Apparently. So it can be hard to play drunk on screen, right? Mm-hmm. So how did, does she pass? I think I think she passes, but I also know that Catherine Hahn has played these type of characters before, if I remember correctly. She was in the Bad Moms movies with, like, Myla Kunis. She's been in so much. And if you look at her filmography page, I yeah. was going to, like, try to, like, 
weed out some of her biggest roles, but obviously you've got the WandaVision one that's Agatha and that she's going to be I even remember now. in something, yeah, she has her own TV show for that, yeah. And But I, I even remember as far back as like Anchorman in like 2004, and I know that she probably goes back even farther than that. So you were able to like identify her. For the longest time, she was just like some person. Then you were like, wait, she's all these people yeah. from all the, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so, uh, so after that, it turns out that Danny decides that he's going to drive her back to her friend's apartment, Claire's apartment, because apparently that's where he thinks she's sleeping Mm -hmm. but um but throughout the episode and it kind of helps with narration and information on the character themselves uh she's writing to this person named dear sugar who is this woman it seems like an elder woman that's kind of trying to help people with their problems and she's writing a lot of blog she's writing on behalf of that like she is that person she's the one providing advice well that's not what happens yet it starts off with her writing to oh okay so she takes over in this first episode yeah makes more sense it was it was actually kind of oddly placed because it turns out that uh she was so embarrassed about being kicked out of her own house she actually hasn't spoken to her friend about being able to sleep on her couch so she's actually just kind of wandering the why doesn't she just uh, like rent out a hotel for the night well that's what that's what she does kind of she goes to her old workplace and her old workplace i think was like this elder home like a nursing home yeah a nursing home exactly um and she goes to one of the rooms because uh because all the rooms i think have two beds and she goes to one of them that only has one bed and she decides to sleep right next to one of the patients in the that sounds more like a hospice situation which is weird (laughs) well yeah i mean it might have been because she she then acts the next morning like she was just at her job but then uh she has she hears a complaint from the front desk that Mm -hmm. apparently someone which was her was sleeping next to one of the patients in the room yeah and then and then she goes down and this was the strange part to me so apparently the one of the patient's family members uh filed the complaint oh so they'd gone to visit they'd seen her sleeping and then they just assumed that she was a random person they didn't they didn't see her sleeping the thing that made it very strange to me and kind of made claire come off as a little unlikable at least in this scene which i found strange was that the like person who was speaking to claire was like my mom says that someone was sleeping in the bed next to her that night but the mom had alzheimer's Mm -hmm. and i was surprised that like someone who was obviously meeting with the mom knowing that they have alzheimer's would believe what the mom says i think that's part of the yeah that makes sense because like again you want to trust the person for as long as you can with the disease i can understand that but then claire maybe that's that's part of the reason why it works with the plot is that she could have like passed it off and said well no your mom's crazy and that's what that's what she does but Mm -hmm. it was like it just came up i don't know that scene kind of like rubbed me the wrong way and i think annoyed me even more than it should a than little the, bit than the breaking in drunk did yeah i mean like that well that's as far as just defining her character it seemed a lot worse of a thing to do that's the problem with i think claire's character and probably with the show as a whole is mm-hmm. that uh she, i didn't find her as that likable sure there's redeeming things about her in fact we even get throughout the episode frequent flashbacks to her and her mom and seeing yeah so what'd you think of the flashbacks or the younger version of her the casting and all that okay so the casting i i didn't i I didn't see how it connected. Like, I didn't think that the younger version of her Sarah looked, yeah, looked like the Claire from the older version. She's from um, the Wilds. Did you recognize her from that? No. Not the Wild, but the Wilds. <laughs> the Wilds. Okay. Is that the TV show? Yeah, the one where they, like, crash land. Yeah, that's what I saw. I remember. Yeah, I, I didn't remember her from that. But uh, the, also, the flashbacks, aside from showing kind of the mom and uh, w- what she had to go through, because we kind of get it through hints that this dad really has nothing to do with the family. Family. In fact, the first flashback has to do with Christmas morning, where we're seeing that uh, that Lucas, which is her brother, yes. we don't see the older version of him in this episode. I assume that we will uh, throughout the rest of the series. Mm-hmm. But he, yeah, he's kind of mad because he gets a knife and he thinks that's really cool and he thinks that his dad sent it for him. But it turns out that the mom's like, "Oh no, I got refurbished for you," and he kind of gets a little upset about that. We also see uh, so it's like a deadbeat, absent father. Yeah, type. Okay. and then we also get and Claire. So- Claire she, was like the secondary parent. Is that what happened? And then now she's an alcoholic, or what? I mean, like I we don't we don't get that much throughout the episode. Sure. The full, all the flashbacks include the mom. Um, and again, uh, I felt I 
felt worse for the mom than I did for Claire this episode because Claire, for her Christmas gift, she opens up, it's a jacket, and it's like not the color that she wanted. But later on in another flashback, we see that the mom didn't get the receipt for it. It feels like it's setting up towards something. Like, does anything happen by the end of the episode to the mom or anything? Well, uh, yeah, that's yeah, that's exactly what happens because instead instead of telling young Claire that she didn't get the receipt, she just lets Claire uh, buy like the new jacket and the mm-hmm. color that she wanted. So basically, she has to like spend all of the like money that she 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 loses a lot of money. And then we learn that apparently that was the last gift that the mom got for Claire because uh, the mom dies two months later. We learned that through narration, though. Mm-hmm. Uh, again, the and show- how effective was that? Like, did that make you just super sad? Or, I mean, yeah, did, I, did think like was, I think it was. I think it was the most. What? I think it was the most emotional that the show was able to do. There's also a scene that I thought uh, Catherine Hahn did her best acting in, where um, it's it's at a bar because she's doing some couples therapy with her husband. That was something where I was like, oh, okay, it seems like they're still actually together because from the first scene, it made it seem like this was like a they're divorce. separated but not divorced. Yeah, exactly. Um, but when Claire, I think, forgets her phone or something, she goes back into the couple's therapy room and sees in a separate room that her husband and the therapist are, uh, are like, speaking. So so they're almost having, like, private sessions. In fact, Catherine Hahn says a pretty good comparison in the episode. She says it's almost like after school hours in school where it's like you're getting extra counseling and she felt like during the therapy session that the therapist and the husband were ganging up on her. What was the Oscar Isaac thing that came out a few months ago? The HBO show that was like Marriage Story, but like it had a certain name oh, to it. Oh, uh, Scenes from a Marriage. Yeah. Is it kind of like that? Because that was about therapy and marriage, and I don't even know where it went. But it's I think story, that whole but... show was like, uh, was centered just around that one room, right? Where mm-hmm. they were talking about it. Maybe. <laughs> this was, but yeah, this, this was just kind of supposed to make you feel a little worse for Claire and make you realize that maybe Danny wasn't as good a husband as they were making him out to be at the very beginning of the episode. Um, the weirdest part i think about the episode though is is the sugar storyline because we meet this character it's about i think after the first 10 minutes named sam Mm -hmm. uh they obviously claire and sam know each other they're they're friends and um and just kind of out of nowhere sam says that he's actually sugar And that was strange to me because we had only met Sam. We'd only known Sam for like two minutes or so. And then suddenly they were like, this is apparently supposed to be sugar. And from at least the way that the episode was treating it, maybe it was all the times that she had already said through voiceover, hello, sugar. But it seemed like that publication was way bigger than they were making it out to be. Because by the end of the scene, not only do we realize that Sam is sugar, he's actually playing this elderly woman as a middle <laughs> school, a middle-aged white man because he says that people will take his advice more seriously. But he also offers the job to Claire. Mm-hmm. He's like, here, I have all these different letters. But Claire is kind of so in the midst of this because she really was blind. What, what sh- makes him think that she would be be a good sugar replacement you know, i actually really don't know i think the show just tries to sell it as like she has good advice because her blogs that she's posting are so good but throughout the episode i never saw her make like a good judgment call okay. like she, like for example she sleeps or, or almost sleeps with one of the, her uber drivers this is what i was going to bring up before i think that's that's part of it though is the fact that she's honest about that though right like she's not afraid to talk to her, or at least when she takes well, on the suit and well my thing was when she almost sleeps with the uber driver they uh it's a water bed and then she is basically on the verge after realizing that because the uber driver is so much younger she's on the verge of a mental breakdown in fact she has a mental breakdown that scene that's why i thought her acting in this show or especially in that scene was so well yeah but i don't know if she's in like the right headspace to actually play this character that's supposed to be giving well at the end of the episode she uh she does end up taking the job and gives like a advice to a 22 year old basically being like like a version of herself yeah and and from so the, all the flashbacks of seeing them lose her mom i assume the 22 year old that she's giving to advice uh, has also gone through some sort of grief yeah or... it's, it's basically it, i think the, what the 22 year old was asking was like give some advice if you were able to speak to your 20 something year old self mm, okay uh, so and, yeah it just and it's basically yeah and i mean like that so again those emotions because especially by the end of the episode is trying to get really really sad i didn't feel as much just because i didn't feel like claire was that in interesting character to follow again Catherine Hahn's performance is great but you can't rely on a performance for the whole show Mm -hmm. Um, by the very end of the episode yeah Claire she goes to her house she sees that uh, there's this box out for her 
Um, I was a little confused by this scene because I wasn't really sure what it meant. Because she opens up the box. Usually a box is not well, a good thing. Well, <laughs> no, I understand that. But that's where the like kind of confusion came into play. She opens it up. She sees that it's her jacket from uh, that was given to her all the years back. And yes. she kind of cries over it. And I was like, okay, she's going to take the box along with her. But then uh, Ray comes out, her daughter. Mm -hmm. um, Claire kind of tries to like say, I love you. And like I always care about you and stuff. Ray, it doesn't really seem like it's having it, but she asked Claire if she should take the box inside. And I was like, isn't Danny the one, at least that's what it seemed like, to put the box outside and not have Claire in the house? And so it, it just kind so of... So it was just was sitting odd. outside of the house? Yes. Okay, yeah. then yeah, you would think that maybe the husband was the one who did that and that the daughter just didn't know? Maybe, yeah, something like that. Missed signals? Okay. And then, yeah, Ray brings a box back inside, and that's kind of where the episode ends. Overall, I felt like it was kind of a little bit of a jumbled mess. And I know that I mentioned Catherine Hahn's performance. I think that the rest of the cast does a fine job, too. She's just kind of the one to sell it. And I think that the show has potential, but overall, I really think that it is kind of a boring story and overly emotional at parts, and it really just didn't work. So I'm going to have to give the show actually not a passing grade. I'm going to give it a 5 out of 10. Okay. Well, Decider said stream it as 7.2 on IMDb, 88% on Rotten Tomatoes, Glider, AV Club, Paste, all positive reviews. So overall, you're a little bit in the minority, mm. but... Um, Again, this show is actually not 100% based off of the book itself. It's only loosely inspired by Cheryl Strayed's story. Like, her marriage and her kids are quite different than what's presented here. <laughs> I would kind of hope so. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so when I read that, I was a little surprised because I don't even think the play is like that. The only paper I think that did give it a negative review was the Wall Street Journal. And they said, somewhere en route from the Deer Sugar phenomenon to a collection of essays to a stage play and then a TV series, someone lost the plot or failed to formulate one. See, that's kind of, that's what I agree with more. Also, I, I don't know why, but when I was watching the episode on Hulu, they play the trailer, like a one minute trailer. Interesting. And even though it seemed like it was going to be a heartfelt show, they had a lot of jokes packed into it. Mm -hmm. And and when I was watching the first episode, and that's not a reason why I gave it a negative review, but it seemed like the this was not really that much of a comedy. Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah like, this, this is, is way more of a drama. You were saying, and I think- And her podcast still exists, like she brought it back. So. It's still out there. I think for Beef, you were saying how that's like a tragic comedy. Am I thinking of the right show or something like this? I think, I feel like tragic that, comedy. Tragic yeah. comedy, I feel like that almost applies more to here for Tiny Beautiful Things because you can definitely see where the tragedy and the drama come into play. All right. Do you want to play a game then to lighten it up? Sure. All right. So the director of the episode is Rachel Goldenberg. Okay. And she's known for directing one of these four things, but you have to tell me which one it is. Okay. Mm -hmm. A Deadly Adoption, which was the Will Ferrell, Kristen Wiig Lifetime movie. Yeah, that that's came the out one that came out ago. a couple years ago. Yeah. Or Lin Manuel Miranda's Hamilton and In the Heights. Or Life Unexpected, the 2010 Brit Robinson teen drama that ran on the CW. Life Unexpected. I feel like I've, yeah, I definitely have heard of that or, before. Or D, the Human Centipede trilogy. And you're saying one of She's these? She's directed one of them. Okay. I, no, 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 I know for a fact it can't be In the Heights because In the Heights was the Crazy Rich Asians director. What, what was his name? Uh, John Chu, I think. Okay, uh, but I know it's not that. Um, I'm going to go with what was the what was the drama that you were talking about? The third one? The third one was Life Unexpected. I'm going to go with that The 2010 Britt Robinson teen drama that ran on The CW was actually the creator and writer um, of that show was Liz Tegeler, who is also the showrunner here, but not the director. The director is actually the same director of A Deadly Adoption, the Will Ferrell, <laughs> Kristen Wiig Lifetime movie. That's where she got her big break working with Funny or Die. She actually also won a uh, primetime Emmy for the Obama um, Between Two Ferns, Zach Galifianakis uh, Interview? short. Interview? Yeah, the yeah. little short that they did with that. So she's, <laughs> but the funny thing is also the uh, stage production, the play that happened in 2016, 2017, that was directed by the same person who did the Hamilton and in, in the Heights uh, direction. And that person's name is Thomas Kale. Oh, okay. So I think you might have been confusing maybe director with, or maybe that is who, who you were thinking of. I, I don't know. No, 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 it wasn't. Okay, I, I was thinking of something different. All right, um, I, was, I was wondering. What about the human centipede? That know? was just in there for fun. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> 
just imagine having that on your IMDb. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, other than that, though, I think you've kind of spelled out what the plot was, what your favorite moments were, kind of went into the backstory a little bit. There's our game. Um, anything? Oh, the, I will say Hello Sunshine has already produced a new TV show that's called The Last Thing He Told Me, starring Jennifer Gardner and also based off a book. But the that is a thing thriller. He told me. Yes, and it, the titles just seem somehow to connect a little bit. Yeah. You know? But remember Hello Sunshine, the whole idea of it is they're trying to do it female No, I, I understand that, are, that. It's just funny how the names are so, like, yeah. it, I mean, they're unique. You can mm-hmm. say that. But I think sure. this book, the one that's coming out for The Last Thing He Told Me, came out in like 2021. So that got a quick turnaround. Well, this one has been out for what I said, 10 years, yeah, right? right? All right. Well, thanks for listening. We'll see you on the next episode. Hope you enjoyed this one. Bye. Bye.